Hello Algebra 2. This video lesson about chapter 3.6 follows in my order right after 3.2 because it carries forward some of the lessons from 3.1 and 3.2. We're going to continue to solve linear systems, but this, in this case we've got three variables. But we're going to use the same sorts of methods that we've been using up until now, linear combination and substitution. It's just that this time we not only have x and y, but we also have a third variable, z. Let's look at what one of these might look like. You've got, as I say, x and y and z, and instead of two equations, you've got a third equation here. In real life, you might see one in a situation such as this, where you've got three different categories of movies, comedy, drama, and action, and three different types of business, the general rentals, the rentals specifically for children, and then the ones for sale. So I'm going to end up often calling these 3x3 three three systems. And if you hear me talk about a 3x3, three three, this is what I mean. It's that there are three variables, x and y and z, and as well as three rows, the first, the second, and the third, or three equations. And the way to solve this is to attack it step by step. First, I'm going to say it in my words, then I'm going to show you the textbook's words. First, I'm going to try to reduce this 3x3 three three down to a 2x2 two two system, because that's what we've been trained to solve. Second, once I've got it down to that 2x2, two two, I'm going to use one of the techniques that I've taught you to solve the 2x2 two two to get at least one of the variables. And then I'm going to plug the answer from the second step back into my system, and I'm going to do and I'm going to do what I keep referring throughout the year as plug and chug. So let's look at their wording, or um, more, uh, maybe more formal wording. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this to you. You're welcome to hit the pause button and read it to yourself. But the general idea here is that I'm going to start with um, the linear combination method on two of these equations, and I'm going to use that technique to get it down to a two by two. And then I'm going to do a second round of linear combination to the point that I can finally solve for one of the variables. Then I'm going to plug that result back into one of those two by twos and find a second variable. Once I've got two variables, then I'm going to plug both of them back into any of the three equations and get that missing third variable. So pushing this information off to the side and implementing that first step using the linear combination on two of the equations. Here's what I mean. Let's um, multiply this middle equation here by 2. If I do that, notice what's going to happen. These y's are going to end up canceling, and that's what I need to have happen. I need to, get it, I need to get rid of one of the three variables for a while. So here's what's happened. I've um, rewritten this first equation I've simply copied down here. The second equation, I multiplied everything by 2, as, shows, as is shown here, and you'll see that the two y's cancel as I thought they would. Now the 3x and the 4x combine to make 7x. The 4z and the 6z combine to make 10z, and the 11 and the 8 add up to make 19. Okay, now I go ahead and do the same approach with two other equations. Now when I say two other equations, I've got to include the equation that I left out at the beginning. You don't have to start with the top two. I happened to pick that somewhat randomly. But whatever equation you left out, and in this case I left out the third, has to be included at this next stage. You can't leave it out forever. Well, I'm going to, again, eliminate the same variable. I've got to make this um, work out so that I happened last time to get rid of the y's. I've got to get rid of the y's again. So in order to do that, I'm going to match up this time the second equation with the third equation. I'm going to do that by multiplying the second equation through by negative 3, and notice what ends up happening. Once again, I've got uh, an elimination of a variable. This one, having been, whoops, having been multiplied by negative 3, this middle row here now becomes negative 6x plus 3y minus 9z equals negative 12. And the y's cancel once again. Combining these, like, like we've said before, this is after all called linear combination, I end up with negative x minus 4z equals negative 13. So now look what I've got. I've got two, I've, I've got a 2 by 2. I've got the 7x plus 10z. I've got the negative x minus 4z. And now, now that I have that 2 by 2, I hope, 
I didn't jump too fast here. I've simply pulled this row and this row out and gotten rid of the rest so that I have enough space here to work. Now that I've got this, I can do a second round of linear combination. By the way, I'm not going to show this in the video, but if you want at this point, if it's easier for you, you can from this point forward use substitution instead. There is the possibility of mixing and matching along the way, but I'm not going to show that in the video. I'll talk to you about it if you want me to in class, but in the video I'm just going to keep with the linear combination method all the way through this, um, this solution. All right, so now I want to continue with a second round of linear combination, which means, in other words, I've got to find some way to get rid of either the x's or the z's. Well, it's easier to get rid of the x's, right? I just multiply by 7. And what I'm going to end up with for this second row is now negative 7x minus 28z equals negative 91. I'm going to combine the 7x's and they're going to uh, be eliminated. I'm going to combine the 10z and the negative 28z, I get negative 18z. Combining the 19 and the negative 91, I get negative 72. So now I can very quickly solve for that third variable, and I'm going to find that z equals 4. Now I'm going to plug that answer back into either of the two variable equations. I can either put z equals 4 back into the red one, I could put it into the green one if I want, or I could even put it into the blue one if I want. I've chosen to put it into that green one there. So 7x plus 10, uh, I'm sorry, into the green, the red one. <laughs> sorry about that. 7x plus 10 um, now times 4 equals 19. Or in other words, 7x equals 19 minus 40. Keep solving that down, and you're going to find that x equals negative 3. Now I've got two of the three variables I was looking for. I might as well put these off to the side here so that I don't lose track of them. Out of my x and my y and my z I was looking to solve for, I've already got negative 3 and I've got 4. At this point, I'm ready to do that fourth step. I'm ready to put those two values back into any of these three equations. I happened to pick the first one there, and I've plugged, as you can see, the x value in here and the z value here. Now I can solve for y got negative 9 here. 4 times 4 makes 16 here. I move everything that's not y over to the side. I'm going to end up having 2y equals 4, or in other words, y equals 2. I put that in there, and that is my answer to the 3 by 3 question. In three-dimensional space, uh, and we'll talk about this later if I wanted to graph this, I would have three lines in 3D space, and the three lines cross at the point negative 3, 2, 4. If you haven't talked in previous math classes about how to graph things in three-dimensional space, we'll spend a bit of time on that later, but that's not something that I need to talk to you about right now. Instead, I want to give you your turn. I'm going to break this apart, though, into steps, because I know this is a complicated process, and I'm going to help you along the way. So the first thing I want you to do is use linear combination on specifically these top two equations, and I want you to set it up so that you're going to eliminate the y's. Hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'll show you what I meant. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that, and I'm hoping that you set it up this way, so that you multiplied the top row there by negative 3. That enables the y's to cancel, as you'll see here. Now, now that you've got it to this point, and if you don't, hit the pause button, look back at your work and try to get it to this point. But once you do, I want you to go to the next step. So again, hit the pause button and keep going from this point forward. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. And I'm going to assume that what you saw is that, it, as it turns out, whoops, not only the y's ended up canceling, and that's what I wanted to have happen, but it turned out that the z's ended up canceling. So what I was left with was negative 3x equals negative 6, which means that x is 2. And I can go ahead and put that in as part of my answer. So now I'm ready to do another round of linear combination. Again, I'm going to guide you. Put together the second and third equations and do it in a way that you eliminate the x's this time. Okay, I'm going to assume that you hit the pause button and you've done that. 
and I'm hoping that you set it up like this. By multiplying the bottom row by negative 3 and comparing that to the middle row, you'll find that the x's will cancel. If you carry that forward, though, you'll find not only did the x's cancel, but the z's canceled. Every once in a while you get lucky like this, and equations kind of start almost solving themselves for you. What you have left here now is negative 3y equals 3, or in other words, y equals negative 1. Now I've already got two of the three values I was looking for. Next step, and the last step, is to plug those two values back into any of the equations. Hit the pause button. I'm going to, uh, well, you'll see which one I pick. If you pick a different one, I hope you'll be able to translate um, my solution toward yours. But go ahead, hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'm going to show you the final answer, what the z is. Okay, I'm going to assume you did that. I chose to plug the 2 and the negative 1 into that third equation. So I've got this, or in other words, I end up finding that z equals 3. And there's my final answer um, for where those three lines crossed. Now, if along the way, whoops, if you get a false answer at any step, for example, if you get 0 equals 7, that means there's no solution and you can stop. Uh, the only way you would have gotten 0 equals 7, though, is if all of the variables had canceled out and had been eliminated. There were no variables left. You simply had two constants, one on the left and one on the right, and they didn't match. If that happens, then there's no solution. Second of all, if you get it, what's called an identity, if you get all of the variables canceling, but 0 equals 0, or 3 equals 3, something along those lines, that means the intersection of these three equations is one single line, and it's infinite solutions. I mentioned before um, that I'll be talking later about how these appear in three-dimensional space when we graph them. But I just wanted to quickly show you the textbook, or reinforce that the textbook does offer imagery for this. They're um, showing that when there's one solution, the three, um, the three equations in the system end up crossing at a single point, looking kind of like this. When it's infinite solutions like I just talked about, it's because the three of them cross in a way that they intersect at a line. If you get no solution, and I talked about that before, like 0 equals 7, it's either because of this kind of image in, uh, in graph form or this kind of image. We'll talk about this more later in class, so don't worry too much about it right now. I just wanted to explain it if you saw it in the textbook. Okay, as I say, you could get a word problem like this. I'm not going to solve this one. I'm going to just show you how you would set it up. First of all, notice that you do have... Um, each of these becoming an equation, for example, the general rentals total to 3,405 videos. And so you would set it up like this. These are decimals, though. It's a little bit harder to work with, um, but uh, it would be solved through the same steps that I just showed you earlier in the video. Okay, that's as far as I want to go in this video. I'm going to make a separate one on the substitution method. So um, look for that video um, coming up soon.